But Bruce asked me to talk to you um, about <clears throat> why students show up for workshops like this or why students show up um, at our speaking center at all. And the bottom line is um, uh, students only come if their faculty members communicate value for it. That's normally the case um, for, for going into the speaking center. Now, that's not the case, as you all have reported here. Um, most of the time, um, the students will not show up unless a faculty member on our campus requires it. Um, but on other campuses, sometimes the faculty member requires it, sometimes the faculty member suggests it. But what we have found that works the most often, the best, is when the faculty member actually joins the students um, in, in the work that we do. And so we've had We've had faculty members join their students in workshops like this from the Joint School of Nanoscience and Nanoengineering here in Greensboro and from our own campus in chemistry and more recently um, in the spring semester with an engineering um, faculty member and his students from Clemson. And so that's, those have been our experiences up until today. So we have found in our experience that Students only take this training seriously if their advisor is recommending them to. We are very happy to learn that most of you are here because of your interest in this, not because of somebody told you to go. We actually didn't ask how many of you are students and how many of you are to have a permanent position already, but uh, perhaps that's not that important for us. What well, I do want to say to you, and I think what Kim would would second here is that you have an important role, not just in becoming better communicators yourself, but in encourage other people to do this. So you'll notice we have about half of the people who showed up, who, who signed up for this workshop have actually showed up today. And that is about, that's typical for what we find for workshops. I've been sending out emails. If you signed up in advance, you got several emails from me reminding you about it. I've posted on the social media and things to remind people to come and try to get people to show up. But um, sometimes we have a lot less than 50% who sign up, who actually show up. So you, as people who are interested in this and who have dedicated yourselves to becoming better at communication, will, I hope, encourage others to do the same because the scientific landscape is changing. You're gonna to see today when we first start talking about titles, that if you look at science, and I assume it's the same in nature, people are not writing titles like they used to. Titles are completely changing and they're changing fast. They're changing a lot in, even in the last year, I've been watching them. We'll talk about what that means and what that means for you and about how you should be writing your titles, how you should be communicating scientifically. So what I'm, really focused on what Kim and I have been working on is scientific communication for scientists speaking to scientists. There's another type of psychom that's out there where scientists speak to the general public, which it's very also very important. Our focus is scientists speaking to scientists. Our feeling is that until we really get good at talking to each other, get really good at explain our own research so that another scientist can easily understand it, we're not gonna really be good at taking, talking to the public. And we need all of us to be out there really good talking to the public. 